You know, um, here in the United States, it's the holiday of Thanksgiving, which is really why be just a day when we can be in gratitude all the time. But in particular, it's the holiday of Thanksgiving. And um, we shared a Thanksgiving message that, I'll, um, that we sent out, and I'll share with you a little bit today, because as the healer, you know, as, as the healer, and we are all healers, we really are, and we'll talk about that in a moment, we are the reception of grace and freedom. As, as healers, we are all the reception of grace and freedom that pulsate within the infinite of that which is. Um, it's important that the, the grace of the healer is non-judgmental. It's a non-judgmental communion. The grace of the healer is really a non-judgmental communion with what we call the reconnective healing intelligence, energy, light, and information that is infinite. And ultimately, it's not about, how can I say this? It's not about thinking love. You know, we want to think love. It's not about thinking love. It's not about wishing love. It's purely about being love itself. And, and that's what we are. That's really what we are. You know what? I'll share a story with you. Okay? This story is inspired <laughs> by a worm. And some of you are probably saying, a worm? You know, why is it inspired by a worm? And You know, if, if we allow ourselves, we, we, we can see gorgeous beauty and intelligence in everything. Sometimes we just have to let go of some of our screens and our filters. But I was... Um, there was a slow, sort of slow but steady rain all night, the night before last. And as I walked down the driveway yesterday morning, there were lots of worms. You know, short worms, long worms. Um, sometimes I find worms very interesting watching the way they slowly make their way, the way they move. And um, as I got down toward the bottom of the driveway, there was a like a small, long puddle of water. Kind of, I'm, I'm I'm sure it was you know several yards, several meters long, and it was not deep. It was about oh I don't know. It was about this deep, whatever this deep is. And there was this one worm, and it was just moving through the water faster than on the driveway. It was moving through the water. It sort of had, I don't know how to say it, but it was just moving. What it didn't have was any question. It had no doubt, no question about where it was going. It would stop for a moment, eat a little something, and um, continue, no doubt, no question. It was in knowingness and beingness of itself. And what I fairly immediately thought of, what came to mind was, this worm is not questioning where it's going. Why are we? This worm is 
in just unquestioning knowing of itself. What about us? It's time we know ourselves. It's time we know ourselves as healers because we've known this about ourselves all along. We don't need to read books on healing. We don't need to wait for a full moon and bury a crystal, you know, under a certain tree and walk around it so many times clockwise. I mean, we just... It's time that we know ourselves. Know that you are a healer. Know yourself. You've known this all along. You have known this all along. You've known this before. You were old enough. You've known this before. You were old enough to even have words. If we watch twins in the womb or just coming out of the womb, we see one will reach over and touch the other and the other will be in a, just a gorgeous experience of love and healing because of that. Where did we lose our knowingness? Where did we lose our certainty? When are we willing to rediscover that certainty, that knowingness? Part of why we're here is to learn to see through things. To see beyond, to see before, to see the underneath, to see the through. To learn to see it for yourself. To learn to recognize who you are for yourself, not to be told. Waiting for science to prove what we already know is doubt. Waiting for science to come along and give you evidence that one human being can facilitate for another human being. Waiting for science to prove what we already know is doubt. It's allowing doubt to guide your life. And you know what the kicker is about that? It's not even your doubt. You've always been in knowingness that you are a healer. It's not even your doubt, it's someone else's. It's other people saying to you, no, you're not, no, you can't be that silly. Now that's silly. Us buying into it, that's silly. I was listening to a wonderful um, scientist and presenter, um, a woman whose name I would love to tell you right now, and it's just not on the tip of my tongue. But what she said is what we've been saying so, you know, all along. It's so clear. It's so distinct. It's so real. It's so real. Get real. Science, fiction, is simply science that hasn't yet been proven, right? Look at all the science fiction comic books or the science fiction movies from way back in the 1920s and 30s and 40s and 50s, and most of that stuff has already happened. Science fiction is simply science that hasn't yet been proven, and we're sitting around saying, eh, 
I don't know if I'm ready to trust my knowingness because other people who are authorities are saying it can't be. And so I, I think I'll lose sight of who I am because of that. Really? Not me. I don't plan to do that. Do you really plan to do that? I don't think so. When Reconnective Healing first showed up, I want you to know that I lost friends. I had people in the medical field uh, all around, even psychiatrists, you know how authoritarian they, they feel they are, how they just know what's what, except when psychiatrists and psychologists get together and they find that no one really knows what because they don't really agree on anything, but they kind of ignore that part. Um, saying that it's crazy. What have I allowed someone else's doubt, someone else's blindness to prevent me from seeing who I am? Which means to prevent me from seeing who you are, who we are. What have I allowed that? How many people whose lives have been changed because of their healings wouldn't have been because I would have lived in somebody else's doubt. Why do we come together on Wednesdays to talk and share and discuss? Because we know that these conversations shine a light into recognizing who and what we are. Who you are. Are. You're a healer. Now, for some of us, in some ways, that's we can be told this in a way that appeals a little bit to the ego. But it can't really, if we grasp this, appeal to the ego at all, because that's like saying you're someone who breathes. So do we walk down the street saying, oh, I breathe. I'm special. Everyone breathes. Everyone's a healer. Everyone is. As a healer, we are the reception of grace and freedom that pulsates within the infinite of that which is. It doesn't request permission. It doesn't wait to exist until someone else figures out how to prove its existence because it already is. You already are. It doesn't make itself small because it might offend some people who feel that they are the authorities and want to tell you that you are not when you are. Don't make yourself small because it makes someone else feel comfortable when you being the huge magnificence that you are. If it makes someone not comfortable, remain that magnificence. And you as that light will eventually allow that person who feels awkward around it, who will argue with you and get angry about your perspective, not because why would someone be angry at you for recognizing who you are except for the fact that it challenges them to recognize who they are? Be who you are. And that light will allow others to discover who they are. Be in gratitude. It's Thanksgiving. Be in gratitude for recognizing who you are and for the gift of allowing others to recognize who they are through seeing the light that you emanate, that which is. It's not about wishing love. It's not about thinking love. It's purely about being the love that you are. So here's part of what I shared, and I'm going to read some of it, so I just have the words. We are here as molecules, as souls that represent surrender. Surrender to resistance. 
surrender into that which is. Surrendering so that you are no longer resisting that which you are. Surrender isn't losing. <laughs> it's not like that small concept of ego surrender. You know, if you, if you uh, we saw, um, what movie did we see last night? We saw Napoleon. It's not about surrendering to the other side. It's not about losing it. It's surrendering our own resistance to that which we are. The resistance that somehow or other we chose to accept from other people. It's not surrender obscured by ego-driven desire, but rather the surrender that can only come through grace with a capital G. And I'm using the word grace as a concept. Don't attribute the word grace to, to religion. I mean, religion, gorgeous that they use the word grace, but grace does not show up because you're of the right religion. There's no wrong religion. Grace is, you are, that's that. And it's up to people to recognize it or not. Not to make that statement correct or incorrect according to a consensus of opinion. It doesn't care the consensus of opinion. Grace doesn't care whether you believe in it or not, It'd be because it is. I mean, it is. I'm sure if it had a personality, which I don't know that it does, it would love you to believe in it. But um, fine, you know, healing, reconnective healing doesn't care whether we believe in it or not. It just is the chair that I'm sitting in doesn't really care whether I believe in it or not. Or not. It just is. You know, it's a glass of tea that I set on the table. I promise you, the table doesn't believe in the glass, and yet it will support the glass. It just is. And you are. So this, it can only come through grace with a capital G. And then this infinite intelligence, you, you could sort of say, you know, when, when um, Lynn McTaggart said to me, reconnective healing is contagious. Just I'm thinking, can't you find a prettier word? No, but it's that this intelligence of energy, light, and information is like a mosquito, you know, sharing contagion for good. <laughs> it, it allows good and healing to share and spread through the invitation of grace. It's an invitation that we don't always except we could be accepting it more regularly than we do. In retrospect, we might have liked to have accepted it more than we have. And yet, because it is grace, we get to accept it now. You get to accept it now. There's no time expiration date on it. There's no time, so there's no expiration date. Your reconnection is your Recognition. Now, don't think of cognition in the limited form of um, thinking. Your reconnection is your recognition. Cognition, getting this, is, is perception. It's discernment. It's awareness. It's a learning, but not limited through the mind. It's so far beyond the mind, you've got no idea. You could say, when you get this, some people will tell you you're out of your mind. And guess what? They'll be right, just not in the way that they mean it. <laughs> not in the way they think they mean it. It's a discernment. It's awareness. It is learning, but not through the logical thinking mind. It is understanding, but not through the logical thinking mind. It's enlightenment, but it's not that we're becoming enlightened. It's that we're recognizing the enlightenment that we are. So it's insight. It's instinct, it's intelligence, it's information through energy and light. It's a knowingness that is revealed through, communicated through vibration 
and resonance. And in that, we begin to recognize that we are one with everyone and everything, everywhere, because there are no things. There are no individuals. There's no separation. There's no otherness. You know, and, and a lot of people talk about this concept and they say, well, it's non-duality. We use that word. Sure, it's non-duality, but that sort of puts duality as the regular and that this is a separation from it. But really, it's oneness. I, we just don't just want to say oneness all the time because then we, we get so used to the word we stop thinking about it. It's that there is not separation. There is not otherness. And when we grasp this most, it's beyond the words because words are formless. Words are shining a light in a direction to allow us to see metaphorically. Without words, there's a silence. But the silence is pregnant with infinite potential. The, you could say the, the thunder of silence isn't only confirmation. I have to remember who I heard say this. But again, right now, I'm not remembering names, so just know that it was said by someone I was listening to. But it's so clear. It's so beautiful. Listen to it. The silence... The thunder of silence is not only confirmation, it's revelation. It's the revealing of you to you. See, a lot of what you believe you are experiencing and what you are actually experiencing are not necessarily one of the same things. We go out and take lives for our beliefs and then when we discover something else tomorrow, it's, oops, sorry about that. <laughs> Listen, what you believe you are experiencing and what you are actually experiencing are not necessarily one and the same. Breathe. Just breathe. Eyes open or eyes closed, just breathe. This is you. We don't have to decorate healing. We don't have to disguise or attempt to control who we are. We can't, you can't even control your thoughts. Thoughts and thinking happen. We try to control them. How's that one worked out for you? Works out well for financially for people who are trying to teach you how to control your thoughts, but how's that worked out for you?
reconnective healing is real healing for real people who are ready to look at their real self. Isn't that you? Are you tired of all the decorations and the techniques and the protections and the fears? You know, fears we've been given in life and the things we've been told we can't do and things we're told that we're not. And in the healing world, you get a lot of that crap, too. Oh, careful, don't do the healing this way. You'll take on someone's negative energy. And then we believe it and our own beliefs manifest themselves. And then we say it must be real because we don't recognize that we're only buying into that garbage because we think we should because we've Heard it from people we consider authorities. Isn't it time you just listen to a higher authority? No, really? Really? Not the explanation of the words of that higher authority that human beings have interpreted and written down and told you about, but you are that higher authority. You are in direct communication with that higher authority because it is your essence. You are God. You are love. You are the intelligence of the universe. You are healing itself. You are the healing you are looking for. You are that which you are looking for. You wouldn't be looking for it if you didn't already know it as you and as truth. I know a lot of times we come here and we sit calmly in a meditative tone of peace and space and we share some thoughts and we have long silences in between to interpret that and that's wonderful are we doing that today no is that okay absolutely we don't need to be the same all the time why bother some of you might be thinking what the hell did he take this morning <laughs> nothing i have a little decaffeinated tea i don't even drink coffee We are our own excitement and inspiration. It's just sometimes we rain on our own parade because other people have been trying to rain on our parade for so long that we buy into that garbage. Were you coming here for an OM morning? Maybe I'll do one with you next Wednesday. Let's simply now breathe for a moment. Don't worry about how you're breathing. There is no right way to breathe except for the natural way you breathe. So breathe normally. If you've been told to breathe a certain way, live a little. Don't breathe that way. Just be and let's receive. So I'm allowing myself to be in the reception of the reconnective healing frequencies of energy, light, and information. Be here with me. Just receive. If you say, I don't know how to receive, don't worry. You've already started. For those of you who might be choosing to learn, you can go to thereconnection.com or reconnectiveacademy.com. They'll tell you about training programs all around the world. I know we're planning one in the United States, I think in February, I think in the San Diego, California area. I don't know where they all are. Right now, just receive and be. Let's share and be in the reception of the presence of who and what we are as one right now.
How are you feeling with this sharing today? Do you like it? Then share this with your friends. Let them know to come join us here on Wednesdays. Let's inspire true healing from being. Let's inspire this and the planet. It can only happen with you. Tell your friends, get their ass over here next Wednesday morning and call them half an hour before. Remind them that you expect to see them here. Let's talk. Let's share. Let's be. And then let's bring light and information onto the planet together. I can't do this alone. None of us can, but we can do this together. Healing, like, wow, what a concept, huh? Who's it going to piss off? So what? Who is it going to help? That's what's important. My healing is your healing. You want to send a healing here. You want to send a healing there. You want to change the way someone is thinking or a country or a government or how action is going. It starts with you because it is you. Stop looking so far outside of yourself. It's only because we don't realize how close it is that we look further and further away. Here we are. For those of you who are Reconnective Healing Practitioners, facilitate distance healing sessions for people and in-person sessions for people. Jillian and I facilitate distance healing sessions for people all around the world. They just go onto our website, they just go onto the reconnection.com, they schedule sessions with us, and then we talk afterwards, and it, it, I'm so, we're so alive facilitating healings. It's not about Jillian or I being special facilitating reconnective healing sessions. You are. Facilitate the sessions. Share who you are. If you don't want to facilitate that way, then just your being is sharing enough. Your love. I love you. I'll see you here next Wednesday. Same time, for those of you wondering when it started, it starts at 7.45 a.m. California time, 9.45 a.m. Chicago time, 10.45 a.m. New York time, and you'll need to translate into that time zone, the time zones you're in in Europe and Asia and Australia and everything else, but be here, because you are here. Until then, a wonderful thanks, a wonderful Thanksgiving holiday for those of you who celebrate carrying you in my heart, which is our heart. See you next week.